When the King Rune um, KP3S, not a catchy name, but at least it doesn't accidentally spell something else. When the KP3S came to me, I was in the middle of another project. I was working on a way to take common electrical components like Arduinos and motors, LCDs and buttons, and put them in printer blocks so that you can simply snap them together to make interesting little electronics projects that blink and beep and interact with you. I call these electro blocks and I'll be releasing them soon, but they've also spun off a couple of other side projects like well, these little blocks with letters on them that you can use to spell out things on your projects or these flat panels that you can connect blocks to from either side that are kind of good for structural elements, as well as boxes, small, medium, large boxes with printer block connectors on the outside, some of them big enough to store entire sets of printer blocks in them. It's all very exciting and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. But when the KP3S came to me after running off one of the test prints on the SD card, I believe this is one of Ill-Gotten Games Mini's very good print. I just started throwing printer blocks at it, which I normally do. I normally test with a couple of printer blocks, but instead of being the small printer block cubes, I tested them with these electro blocks. And I was immediately super impressed in measuring the accuracy of these pieces. They were dead accurate in X, Y, Z, a little bit off, but otherwise really, really impressive. Definitely good enough for printer block. And so instead of my usual battery of tests, I just kind of started throwing more and more printer blocks. And a lot of the blocks that you see here were tested on this 3D printer. Okay, I'm starting to be impressed with this printer. It's only $180. It's mini, but not that mini. It's actually bigger than most minis with a build volume of 180 by 180 by about 180 millimeters. And it's actually a direct drive, which I know some people will say it doesn't automatically make it better, but that automatically makes me want to test flexibles in it. So I decided I'm just gonna jump to the hard stuff, throw some Ninja Flex in here, 3D print a flexible chibi mall, and it worked perfectly. I unfortunately don't have that one to show you here because I was testing this at the Makerspace and one of the young people coming through saw a squishy pink pig and thought that that was adorable and I think it went home with them. But I mean, it was able to handle Ninja Flex like a pro. So I'm starting to do the math cheap price, fairly capable, fairly easy to use. This is gonna be a good printer, but it's not perfect. There are some things about it that I noticed like almost before I even started using it. For instance, the connector that's holding the Z axis lead screw in place, this is just a friction hold. Even though the stepper motor peg has a D shape because it's been cut flat so that you can it, just for the purpose of putting a screw in that to hold this there, that's not what this connector does. This connector just holds it on with pressure and friction, which means it has the potential to eventually slip. Also, you might have noticed this big power brick sort of thing. If you're looking at this and thinking, that looks familiar. That looks like a power converter that should be on the inside of a machine because it has like eight different screws with eight different powers coming out of it. Why the heck is this on the outside being used as only one power out on here? Obviously they've got to convert it on the inside for the five volts. This seems weird, functional. It, it does do the job, but why? Oh, and there's one more thing that I haven't mentioned. It's the way that it holds filament. No, there's no place for it to hold filament on the machine. They send a couple of these little roller thingies to put on here, which they're functional if you've got a full size roll of filament. But if you like to use one of these small size rolls of filament, then this thing just 
doesn't work at all for it. It is specific to full-size rolls of filament. And I gotta say, the rollers on this thing are awful. They don't roll worse spit. I think that this is the first thing that you should get rid of. And you know what the best part is though? It can print its own solution. I found this filament holder on Thingiverse and all I had to do, it was designed for an Ender 3 size, so 200 millimeters across. I just scaled it non-uniformly in the whatever dimension that is to make it 180. It made the uh, peg ovalid instead of round. And then it failed at the top and I think it's possible because it was too tall for the printer and it just crapped out. But you know what? Regardless of that, it can do that. It can do your small size rolls. It can do your large size rolls. This is a great upgrade. Or you can make ones with better bearings in it. But either way, it's a problem. But this is a problem that it provides its own solution for. Now, these problems are on the outside and they're very obvious. So it makes me wonder, well, what are they doing on the inside? Now, like I said, there's a lot about this printer to praise. I didn't mention they're using kind of linear rails for the X and the Y, it's a direct drive. But if they're doing weird things like this, making weird choices on the outside, choices that I can only explain by saying their design process was, how can we make this cheaper? What are they doing on the inside? And is this 3D printer gonna just implode in a year and just not work at all? Then again, if this printer does implode in a year, well, you've had a year of 3D printing with a fairly capable 3D printer. If you kind of like the idea of 3D printing but aren't quite sure that you'll be into it, you spend 180 bucks, get a 3D printer that's fairly capable. If it runs for 10 years, great. If it runs for only one year, well, you'll have a year of knowing whether you're gonna be into 3D printing. This, this is probably the most perfect starter 3D printer that I have seen to date. So with all the data about how this works and how well it works, I now go to my spreadsheet, the spreadsheet that I use to create the ultimate tier list. I put all the data down, all the pluses and the minuses in there, and I run the calculation, the calculation for the total area of that triangle. I know it's gonna be pretty good, but I didn't expect where it ended up on the list. It surpassed everything in C tier. It surpassed everything in B tier. It surpassed everything in A tier. It even surpassed everything in S tier. Ladies and gentlemen, this 3D printer is aptly named because the King Rune is the new king. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description, and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon, which you can check out here, and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time.